league is hard. It's not always going to be perfect. There'll be a lot of people down on you. Um, you might be down on yourself. Wish you could do better. Uh, but you know, keep on getting back up. Keep on swinging. Keep on competing. Uh, regardless of the score, or the situation of the game. And that's not easy to do, right? You know, that's not easy to do when you're down and, you know, to sit on a bench and start bitching and complaining. That's, that's easy to do. It's hard to, to stick with it and get ready to play the next series and not worry about if you just got beat on a pass or if you got sacked. That's, you got flush it pretty quick. Dr. Lonnie does a great job. The team psychologists are talking to the team. Um, and I think our guys, you know, each week we get a little bit better. We know we're a long way away, uh, early part of the season, but, um, you know, we just try to compete and do the best job we can. Brian Dabo waited a long time for his opportunity to be an NFL head coach. It felt like the window was open for him over a decade ago. It finally happened, and it's working very well for the New York Giants. There were some quotes before the game, Kimberly Martin of ESPN, with quotes from Kayvon Thibodeau saying, hey, look, I wasn't here last year, but guys who were, they weren't very happy about being here, and now they are with Brian Dayball as the head coach. And I actually, Miles, I am going – to just savor for a little bit the fact that I am not a complete and total moron. I picked the Giants to win the game 24-20. I got the very rare, what I'll call a hole-in-one for those of us who pick the scores of games. Don't give me the sarcastic golf clap. But the reason I believed in the Giants yesterday, I spoke to Dayball after the game that they played in London when they beat the Packers, and I, I heard some of that same thing we just heard. No excuses. Always mm -hmm. keep pushing, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the conditions, no matter who's injured, no matter how many points you're down. I mean, this is the second straight week they've come back from a double-digit deficit to yeah. win the game. And the Ravens now have a horrible habit of blowing double-digit fourth-quarter leads. And, you mm -hmm. know, as I've said a couple of times in the past few days, I really would love to know, talking about true alphas, I'd love to know what went down between John Harbaugh and Wink Martindale to cause Harbaugh to decide to let Martindale move on when his contract expired and not give him whatever raise he was looking for, whatever extra power he may have been trying to get because they miss Wink Martindale now. Because Mike McDonald, hey, he may become the next Vince Lombardi eventually, but he's not there yet. And that Giants defense is benefiting from Martindale the way the Ravens defense did all the years that Martindale was there, Miles. Yeah, it's really interesting because you look at the way the Ravens are blowing leads. I mean, I don't expect Baltimore to blow a 10-point lead under John Harbaugh. I, I just don't. And the fact that they're doing that, Right now, multiple times early on in the season, they really have a lot of problems to fix. But also, you got to give the Giants credit for continuing to stick with it. They absolutely do not quit. And when they need game-changing plays, when they need big drives, when they need to make a real big stop, they've been getting it. And so I don't really know exactly how good the Giants are. They have a favorable schedule based on where they finished last year in the standings. But right now, they're playing football as a complete team, as we continue to use that word, as well as anybody, right? You cannot just say, all right, well, we have a 10-point lead on the Giants in the fourth quarter. We're all right. You're not. Just because of the way that they play. They're going to be relentless. And I think you are absolutely right in that Baltimore misses Wink Martindale. I don't know what went down. The Both uh, Martindale and Harbaugh basically just had really nice things to say about one another and just effectively said it was time for Martindale to move on. I don't really know what that means, but Martindale seems to be in a really good spot right now with Brian Dayball. And I am sure that Brian Dayball, despite wanting to keep Patrick Graham Patrick Graham not doing so hot exactly with the Las Vegas Raiders. Maybe this was one of those deals where it just works out really, really well because they end up with Wink Martindale. The Ravens really have to be kicking themselves, though, at 3-3 three and three when they could be 6-0. and oh. If they would only play a complete <laughs> game, they would be 6-0. and oh. Their defense needs to play a complete game. But yeah. that has to drive John Harbaugh crazy to have those games won in the fourth quarter and see it fall apart. 17-point lead over the Bills, 21-point lead over the Dolphins, and now most recently a 10-point lead 
over the New York Giants that all fell apart because of mistakes. And there were some uncharacteristic mistakes from Lamar Jackson. You know, you look at the numbers offensively, they finally got 100 yards rushing from someone not named Lamar Jackson. Kenyon right. Drake had 119 yards. I don't know what's up with J.K. Dobbins. I think that his return from the ACL tear last year, just to get him back to where he was as a rookie, taking longer than expected. But Drake finally stepping up, but it just doesn't matter because if your defense isn't going to hold it together. And again, yesterday, it wasn't all the defense collapsing. There were mistakes by Jackson that helped fuel it. But it's still uh, – it's, it's weird to see, and it's weird to see the Giants – finding ways to win because it's not like they went out and spent a ton of money on talent to transform the team. Right. Brian Dayball kind of got stuck with a bad roster and he's making the best batch of chicken salad that I've seen in recent years with guys that we just thought weren't any good. And maybe it's, they were never horrible, but the coaching wasn't doing anything to make them good. Now you take a coach who can take this collection of men he inherited and make them into winners. That, that's why I'm a believer here with what the Giants are doing because they're only going to get better as they, under Joe Shane, the new GM, systematically get better players. Yes, they are. And I think one of the things that we've seen is that Mike Kafka has fit his system to the strengths of what these players do, right? I mean, Saquon Barkley is having a career resurgence because they put an emphasis on running the ball and running it well and finding creative ways to get him the ball in space as well. So it's not just that they're doing one thing and they're doing square peg round hole and it's like, ah, you know, we're banging this thing and you're not fitting our system and this is not going to work and we got to do da 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 Not really. As long as you buy in, they're going to figure out some way to utilize you to the best of their abilities. So, I mean, I, I, like we said, we're talking about Wake Martindale and all that, but also Mike Kafka, I think, has done a really, really good job. And frankly, I didn't think when they hired him that Brian Dayball wouldn't be calling offensive plays, but I think it's one of the smartest moves that he has made is A, hiring Mike Kafka, Mike Kafka and then B, entrusting him with the play calling. And you don't always see that out of guys, especially who are hired as offensive minds and then become head coaches. A lot of them, they, they keep that play sheet in their hands and they're the ones calling the plays, but that's not what Brian Dayball's done. And I think it's been a really, really good decision by him. That's worked out extremely well. And it's the little things that can make a difference. Saquon Barkley, 22 carries for 83 yards and a touchdown and eschewing the opportunity or eschewing the opportunity, depending upon your preferred pronunciation to score another touchdown late. Remember that Browns jets game when Nick Chubb didn't know do what I? to do and scored when he shouldn't have and opened the door for the comeback win 13 points down and the Jets score and they get the two-pointer or not the two-pointer they get the onside kick and they score yeah, again yeah I, I oh I we all the, remember exactly the, what happened oh, I just want to make you. sure that you didn't forget Miles since you're getting older uh, now but uh, but Barkley doing that that you never get to the point where you get that exciting comeback because Barkley unselfishly situational awareness getting down on the ground and ensuring that the game can end with Daniel Jones taking a knee, Daniel Jones taking a knee, Daniel Jones taking a knee. So not exciting, nothing that jumps off the stat sheet, but the kind of thing that prevents the foundation from ever being put in place for the kind of heroics that we saw back in, was it week two? It was week two, yeah. Mike. Yeah, thank you. But yeah, it, it's it's a I, as a fan, situation. I would have loved to have seen the Ravens come back and win the game because it's it's exciting. It gives you more to talk about. But Saquon Barkley did exactly what the Browns should have done in week two. Yes, it, it, it's the Rolex situation, as Sean McVay used to call it. The time is more important than the points. Kevin Stefanski called it no mas, which means don't score there. Because, again, the only way that a team can come back in the game in that situation is if you score and you let them. The Ravens would have been very, very happy to let Saquon Barkley get a touchdown. And fantasy managers all across the nation also would have been very happy. But the point is to win right? You get a first down there, the game's over, the game's won. And so that's what you need to do. That situational awareness is good coaching, 
right? It's something that you call in on the headset when you call in the play. Make sure everybody knows once you get that first down, go down and you win the game. Game's over. Uh, that's situational stuff. That's the stuff that really separates the good teams from the great teams or the bad teams from the good teams. If you have that kind of knowledge and you do those little things, that wins you games. We hear so much about analytics and following the percentages. That's just a different way of thinking about situational football. Being aware of... I don't think of, it's different. I, I think it's the, the way that it should be. It's, the well, great coaches do that stuff. Right. I mean, uh, you know? That, that, that it's not even... It's not analytics in the classic sense. It's just knowing how the clock intersects with the circumstances, intersects with what your opportunity is, and you just yeah. you just know. And some teams don't. And when they don't, it's more entertaining and glaring and <laughs> confounding. When they do, it's kind of boring, but it delivers well, the victory. For it's the, the Kenny Rogers principle. Nothing boring no. from... Exactly. No one to hold no him. No one to hold him. No one to fold him. No wow. one to walk away. No one to run. A song from before you were born and yet you are aware of its existence. Yeah. I think that's a song from the 80s, too. That's the decade that you just flat out ignore even happened, at least as it relates to sure. pop culture and movies. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, who had, you know, I know Sims, who's a Giants fan. He wasn't real thrilled with the draft pick, but Thibodeau came through with the strip sack to seal the victory. If Huge. they could get. Huge you know, more and more out of him. Again, this is some of the new guys that they've brought in to supplement the holdovers who weren't all that good thanks to Dave Gettleman. But there it is in the strip sack, and that's that for the Baltimore Ravens when they still had a chance to win the game. That was the precursor to the Saquon Barkley decision to go down at the one-yard line. So great day for the Giants. I, I thought I was really going out on a limb when I picked them to win. But the more I thought about it, it's like, you know, we've seen the Ravens self-destruct and the Ravens had that big emotional win on Sunday night you know the Giants were coming all the way back from London and they beat the Packers but that's when I had Brian Dayball's voice resonating in my brain no excuses don't give up don't get soft just go do your thing and uh, the Giants now five and one and in second place in the NFC hi it's Mike Florio thanks for watching PFT on YouTube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk